Shinti Sutta. And although the story is around the monks, it is true that these monks faced many of the same things you and I face living together as a group. So when one is in his stage of life, where he is thinking more of himself than of the others in the group, disputes can arise, just like they can in any home or any family. So when you listen to this, when I read it to you, put yourself in one of the places in the story. We hear here also what the Buddha taught for foundation training first, that all the monks should universally know very well. And what do we find? We find the 37 requisites of awakening that in the section here, just like we teach you when we're learning the twin practice. And then the sutta shows us how putting these two work together in their practice result in mutual appreciation of how each person is doing well in the group or having some kind of difficulty. There is then an example in, a, in the section five to eight. You're going to get to keep this and they are labeled. So I gave you the whole entire sutta. In the end, I decided to give you the whole sutta printed up. There is then an example of communication when each person differs about the meaning and the phrasing of a word that is said. I'm sure this has happened to you amongst groups and families. And then comes, uh, that's in section five to eight, and then the, then comes the attempting to live in concord with one person commits an offense. When that person commits an offense or a transgression, how they handled it to maintain harmony with and without resolving the thing, it makes it impossible to experience Nibbana. And this is what they're taught as monastics. But in the case of our own situations, Reaching Nibbana could equal for us at this time, like attempting to reach any personal goal in our life, even remaining popular with our school friends outside of schoolwork or remaining in touch with the best contacts for work positions that we don't want to slip. We don't, when we don't want our uh, career path to slip down or keeping balance with other dedicated home domestic engineers running a household or home executives with lar very large households. And if you don't know those terms, those are housewives, but we don't call them that in the United States. A lot of times we'll take these other titles and say domestic engineer or home executive to run the household. And we are also, we should not fall behind in our progress due to what is left inside of us. This is the principle behind this part. Um, you know, when we have things that are unsettled and unforgiven and they're stuck inside of us, it's restlessness, guilt, and remorse that's inside us, not settled past disputes. Well, then we don't, things we don't want to let go of in section nine through 15. Well, we can see that this is in the same manner as our own living situations, this is true. Now, if we do not resolve any disputes as advised, then it is impossible to have good sleep, good health, good attention to tasks that we do, good progress in life when we do not carry inside restlessness, guilt, and remorse from unsettled disputes. But when we try to live without resolve, we do not progress in the present time due to the weight of not forgiving others or being forgiven ourselves systematically. And in our own settings, we need to give and receive forgiveness and keep on going without any baggage stuck in the past inside of us. In section 16, it becomes clear that without abandoning disputes, if one were to exalt themselves above others, one person, I'm more important than anybody else here. You have to do what I want to do. I don't care how the house is running. This is what I want to have happen. If that happens with anybody, any age group, 
one cannot attain success on whatever path that one is attempting to follow. What if there is a, isn't agreement about what is wrongly grasped? It's a trifle, let it go. Go sit, under, go sit under a tree with your meditation and just, you know, the thing is he tried to be clear, you know, if it's gonna really, you have to judge the person you're dealing with. And it's, it's true with, um, monastics and lay people, <laughs> the same thing. You cannot speak to certain uh, other monastics about certain topics. They just get very hot and, and they don't back off and they're not open just the way normal people are. Or you find someone who is willing to sit down and look at all the sides of things and see. Now, the most interesting thing to me about the Buddhist teaching is, you know, all of this is, does it operate or not? That's all we have, <laughs> you know? We don't have anybody who was there with the Buddha and can come here and say, yep, that's what he said, that's what he meant, that's how you do it. Everything boils down to, does it operate or not? Okay, and then the person says, define operate. Okay. Uh, basically, this was a gradual teaching, a gradual practice, and gradual progress. All human beings are not the same, so different people are going to take different periods of time to get it this way or that part of it, you see. So your learning levels are different. Your realization is different. So what he stressed most was the damage of dispute. That was what he was stressing the most, I think, in the sutta, because the, the damage through making a decision we're all going to dispute is very damaging. It's like putting a poison seed in here. And if you don't have the lesson of past, future, and present time clear, then you don't just say, it's a trifle. I'll just be here and continue my practice. And then perhaps present it again tomorrow at lunch and see if they see it, if I say it a little differently, you see, that sort of thing.